All right, so let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this time together. I pray that you're going to move by your spirit. I thank you, Lord, that as we get insight into your word, Lord, I pray that we are going to grow together and be strong in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. <clears throat> well, good evening, folks. I trust that you're ready for an exciting evening. And our first, uh, our topic for this evening is the evangelist of the fivefold ministry. All right, then we know that in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, I just want to just quickly recap. And he says, And he himself, that's Jesus Christ, gave some to be apostles, some pro uh, prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. All right, so God uh, gave Jesus Christ um, the, the freedom to give this fivefold ministry. What is the fivefold ministry there for? It is there to equip the body of Christ. Now, here comes the challenge because what has happened is, is, is that the body of Christ have left all the work to the fivefold ministry. In other words, that they have said, okay, well, you perform the miracle. You pray for the sick. You baptize the people. And that is where the problem has come because now it's created a one-man show. And that's never been God's intention. The intention is to have the fivefold to equip the body to do the work. That's why, I, if you know me well enough by now, you'll know that I will push like our Zoom sessions on Wednesday evenings where we come in the small groups and we pray for each other, we minister to one another. Why? Because the body must minister. And so it's important. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's important that you understand that, that the fivefold ministry is there to equip the saints so that the saints can do the work of the ministry. All right, so the word evangelist basically means to announce good news, glad tidings. And what is exciting about the evangelist is he will come and demonstrate some sort of power so that you can sit down and make a decision to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the evangelist is really needed and we need to get taught as the body of Christ how to evangelize. And we're going to get into that in a few minutes time. Okay, so let's have a look at the ministry of the evangelist. Well, before you get into the ministry, we need to look at the qualifications. They must have the characteristics and the qualifications of an elder. So in other words, these are people who are mature. These are people who are strong in the Lord. In 1 Timothy chapter 3 and Titus verse three, uh, chapter 3, you'll see that these are prerequisites and requirements of people who are strong, solid, sound character. Now, why is it so important that these people need to be of sound character? Be simply because they influence people. The fivefold ministry lead, direct, guide, whatever they do, they are going to be influencing people. They are going to get people to do things because they are leading. Okay, so I want to encourage you this evening to know that if you are following a fivefold minister, they have got to be somebody of a reputation, of a godly reputation, doing what God wants and be an example of what God has for you. So now let's get into the ministry. What does evangelists do? All right, we sit down and we, we hear so many people say, I'm evangelist this and I'm pastor that and prophet. We're going through the fivefold so you can see what each of their function is. But the evangelist, number one, is they have a passion for souls. All right. And they have a soul saving ministry. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 25. A true witness delivers souls, but a, deceitless, a deceitful witness speaks lies. So a true witness where you come and you lead somebody to the Lord. And you come and you say, do you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and do you want to make him your personal Lord and Savior? Now, there are very important issues around this because an evangelist will try his best to get you born again. But evangelists are not people that you tend to follow very long. Why? Because their whole focus is to get people born again. Their focus is not to grow you up. Their focus will be to teach you how to get somebody born again. 
Because at the end of the day, getting people born again is one of the biggest objectives that we have as believers. And so the evangelist will keep on focusing on how do I get somebody saved? And every time you speak to them, it's about who got saved? How many people got saved? Because it's about getting people out of hell and into heaven. Now, it's important that we know this because every single one of us should be leading somebody to the Lord. And we should not be leaving it to the evangelist. We should be looking at the evangelist to teach us how. Now, let me give you an example. I was part and involved with the 50 days of glory that happened in East London a few years ago. And we would go out onto the streets every single day to lead people to the Lord. For 50 days, we just evangelized and led people to the Lord. But what did the evangelists do? The evangelists taught us how to do that. Taught you how to go cold to somebody and get them to the place where they would might uh, have to make a decision. You know, you can present the truth in a simple way and now they can choose for themselves which way they want to go. And so it's really exciting to see this in operation. But their whole heart and their whole motive and everything around them is to lead somebody to the Lord. Number two. They will have signs following their ministry. All right, in Mark chapter 16, 15 to 20, it said to them, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes is baptized and will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. These signs will follow those that believe. In my name they will cast out devils, they will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not by any means hurt them. If they lay hands on the sick, they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word and accompanying signs. Now, I want to tell you something that there's, there's something about an evangelist that comes and demonstrates. Now, very often with the evangelists, the power gifts are evident. Okay, now we've dealt with the gifts of the Spirit, but the gifts of the Spirit are there as part of the Holy Spirit, giving it to the body of Christ to sit down and help people. But the power gifts, all right, the gifts of healing, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, the power gifts are there. And they're going to see this. They're going to see a demonstration, the working of miracles. All these gifts start going, okay? Now you've got the power gifts and the revelational gifts, particularly that flow together with the evangelist. The evangelist might call somebody out by name, but they don't just stop there. That's just a revelational thing. What they do then is they release the power that you actually see it. Now I've been privileged to stand on platforms where these evangelists have ministered. All right, Morris Sorello, um, Rainer Bonker, you know, all of these, these min ministries. And I've been there to witness this as a young man. Being involved in these big crusades. And had the privilege to sit down and see this in action. I have seen how that uh, Reynard Bonker would stand on the stage and release a prayer and say, God, everybody be healed. And people literally walk out of wheelchairs. This is not a debate thing. You physically, because we had help wheel them in we were part of the ushering team and the young guys we were called to go and get them out of the ambulances and wheel them in in chairs so we understood that this was not a fake thing and when they stood up you really knew that you had seen a miracle it wasn't a debate and so what happened in these times was that we saw the power of god and we saw the working of miracles all right the other day there was an evangelist that was praying for somebody that had no eyes in the eye socket. And as they laid hands, working of miracles took place and they got eyes. Now, one of the things about the evangelist is, is they understand the power gifts. They understand the gifts of the Spirit. They understand how to use them. God uses them extensively in that simply so that the world can look at that and go, well, there has to be a God. I have st stood on stage um, as part of the band where they'd sit down and they would rebuke 
any form of witchcraft off the stage. He said, if you've got stuff of witchcraft, you better get rid of it. The next second, the stuff comes flying onto the stage. And I'm talking about knives and, and um, objects, witchcraft objects and all sorts of things that, that come with to the, to the stadium. And we'd look at this and go, how can one guy just pray a simple prayer and look at the results? It is an evangelist. He has an anointing for this. All right. My spiritual father is an evangelist. Pastor Jimmy Crompton is an evangelist. Let me tell you something. The only thing that he wants is soul saved. Any program in the church has to end up getting soul saved. It doesn't matter where he starts off, what topic he starts off with. By the end, souls will be saved. And we used to sit down and look at this and see how the anointing of an evangelist, a real evangelist, how much power it would carry. Let me give you an example. We would have guest speakers. And the guest speaker would sit down and have an altar call and say, well, anybody wants to get born again, put up your hands. And they would put up their hands and there might be five people. And then Pastor Jimmy would get up and go, no, God says there's more. He'd take over the mic and have another altar call. And his altar call would have two or three hundred people in. And I want to tell you right now, a true evangelist is after souls, but there is an anointing and with it comes power. With it comes signs and wonders so that people can see the power of God. So that what the evangelist will do will sit down and say, this is how you lead somebody to the Lord, but this is also how you move in the gifts. And so the evangelist will focus on souls and gifts. And they will show you how to operate in the gifts, how to read the spirit, how to release power. And it's exciting to see when that happens. Um Angus is another one. When Um Angus stands up top there and he prays and he goes, Amen, it's like the whole earth shakes. But the point is, he's an evangelist. There is an anointing to draw people to Jesus Christ. But their job is not to do the work all the time. Their job is to get others to do the work. And under Pastor Jimmy's uh, ministry, as a young person, we used to do street evangelism. And we'd go out through the night, every Friday night, 11 o'clock, we'd hit the streets. Come home at 4 or 5 in the morning, every single Friday. What were we doing? We were closing down nightclubs. We would sit outside and evangelize and minister to the guys coming to the nightclubs that eventually there was nobody in the nightclub and the nightclub would go bankrupt. And so I want you to understand evangelist teaches you how to do it and you go with might and you go with power. And so we need the evangelist to stand up. We need the evangelist to train the body of Christ because right now, our world needs to get saved. We need people born again. We need to know how to lead them to the Lord. Number three, they will have wisdom in winning souls. They will know how to win the, win the souls. They will know what type of uh, tactic to use. All right, not just go in there and just bombard. To genuinely know how to deal with each person. Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Why are you wise when you win souls? See, because you are getting people out of hell. You are getting people into God's kingdom. They'll have a compelling ministry to bring, to bring sinners to the gospel feast. As in Luke chapter 14, 23 to 24. They will go to the highways and by highways and go call people in. I want to tell you right now, it doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter who you are. You just got to come in and get born again and get saved. I remember going into the trans sky many times with Pastor Jimmy's brother. His name is Jeffrey Crompton. And he used to go into the trans guy and evangelize the trans guy. 
and father him. He was a real missionary going into the real Pandoks and into the places that, that, you know, that you hardly can get there with a four by four. And I tell you, God showed us some incredible miracles, healings, but most of all salvations. How that people, evangelists would carry an anointing and power and that when they released it, stuff would happen. I saw so many deliverances. Apparently, just before we got there the one time, the chief's son was raised from the dead. What does that do? It changes a culture. It changes people's lives. But they have the wisdom on how to do it. They have the wisdom on how to approach people. They will show you how to do it. And so if you could get around evangelists, ask them how to do it. Now, Rodney R. Brown is an evangelist. He goes literally to cities and stadiums and things. But if you want to, and I'm sure that they've still got it. I think he's is called um, River. Okay, I think he's also River. But in America, look for Rodney R. Brown River. And you can actually look for his soul winning tract. He's got a little soul winning tract. And we've got boxes of them still in our house. My children still use them to today. They'll take that little tract and go and lead people to the Lord. <clears throat> Why is it that everybody in my family can lead people to the Lord? Because we got taught by evangelists. Evangelists taught us how to do it. And guess what? My children were young. My children were like 10 years old, 13 years old. They were leading people to the Lord. To today, they still lead people to the Lord with that same method. All right. The thing about an evangelist, and this is something that very often frustrates the local pastor, is that an evangelist is often not called to the local church. You're not going to find an evangelist sitting in every single meeting. He's not going to be able to sit down in every home cell. You see, the problem with an evangelist is he's got to be where the unsaved is. He wants to be with the unsaved. He wants to be where people are needing salvation. He doesn't want to sit with a bunch of Christians. And so if you have got an evangelist, and I'm speaking to the pastors now, if you've got an evangelist in your church, you need to release him. We had an re evangelist friend of mine, and he was a biker, and he was part of the Christian Bikers Association, CMA. And he used to hardly ever come to a church meeting. He was permanently in pubs, and he was permanently in you know, the rough areas. Never drank, but everybody knew him. And what did he do? He started to lead people to the Lord. Once they got saved, he would send them. Okay? He would send them to the local church. He would send them to small groups. And say, listen, you take care of them. You'll come to the small group once to introduce the person, make sure that they're fine, and then he off he would go again. And so I want you to know that this is how God um, works. This is how God works. The evangelist is looking for unsaved people. It's very similar to when Jesus Christ was always sitting with the sinners. All right. And sitting with the, the muchus, if you would. Because Jesus Christ was looking for them that needed salvation. And so the same happens. The other fivefold ministry is very much equipping the saints the Christians, but not the evangelist. The evangelist is only looking for unsaved. And so you're going to have to give grace to the evangelist. You're going to have to give him an open door. Okay? And so, thank you very much for those who put up the comment. All right, River of Life Church is Rodney Hart Brown. And please go look on there. There's a brilliant tract that you can use. I'm actually going to see if I can find the link. And if I can get the link for that download, I will load it up on my Facebook page so that you can get the link to download these tracks. All right. Like I said, we've got boxes of them printed so that we are ready at any given time. And you'll always find them in the car cubby hole or somebody's handbag or something. Areas of evangelism. So what happens in the evangelism, it is not just the mass evangelisms. It's not like the Reynold Bonkers or the, or the uh, Morris Arellos or all these guys. It's not always like that. Okay. 
There are certain areas that they can teach us in evangelism. Let's take some examples out of the Bible. Number one is house-to-house -house evangelism. All right, where you go to somebody's house. They continue steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine, Acts 2.42, uh, in fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayers. Okay, so they continue steadfastly in that. But verse 47, praising God and having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So in other words, they were moving from house to house and people were getting saved as they moved around. So what I would encourage people to do is this. Invite people to small groups. I'm very keen on small groups. I believe in small groups. Okay, we need to get to it. Now, I know we're in lockdown. We're not allowed to do that right now. But I'm telling you right now, I am preparing for small groups. Okay, I'm preparing for nations to get used to small groups and people where we can get together. You don't need 50 or 100. You can have 10. Why is that important? Because you can have an impact. You get to know where the people are at. You know what they're doing. Okay, we're going to continue with our digital gatherings. But on top of that, we are going to look at small groups. Because that's where you can lead people to the Lord and follow them up and get them to grow up in Jesus' name. Child evangelism. Okay, Matthew 19, 14, and Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and don't forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. So in other words, take children, learn how to go to a primary school and lead them to the Lord. You know, take what you can to the ch children. One of the things that we are very, very strong on, and you're going to see that we're going to get strong on this, is, is that we are creating a brilliant children's church curriculum. I'm going to make sure that we spend a lot of time and effort and make sure that we get this right. I have a very big concern that children are not getting the foundation that they should anymore. And so if you go to uh, Father's Heart Facebook page, you'll see we're already starting to run children's uh, curriculum for primary school for English and Afrikaans. Why is that important? Because children are the easiest to lead to the Lord. The Bible says, Train a child in the way that he should go and he's not going to depart from it. So I want you to understand that we need to focus on these things. All right, so an area of evangelism is children. How do I get them, get children born again? Old age homes. Psalm 71 verse 9. Do not cast off in the time of old age and do not forsake me when my strength fails. The old age home is brilliant. Lead them to the Lord and get them to start praying. Ask God to show you. Those who have a gifting for the older folk. And there are many older folk that are watching. And I want to commend you. But lead everybody to the Lord. Hospital evangelism. Matthew 25, 36. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. All right, are you going to the hospitals? Are you praying in the hospitals? You know how many times I end up in a ward and I end up having to pray for everybody in the ward? It's fine. I lead many of them to the Lord. I, I don't know how many times I've ended up with other religions asking me to pray after they've heard me pray. You see, I believe that God really wants us to start evangelizing people and getting them born again. And we're going to help you. We're going to give you the tools. Home Bible class evangelism. Acts 20, 18 to 21. And when they come to him, they said, You know from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I've always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility and many tears and trials which happened, how I kept nothing back that was helpful, but proclaiming it to you and taught you publicly from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance, uh, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, <clears throat> these small groups that I'm talking about, you start drawing somebody who's not born again. And you start off with a social. Tell him, listen, come with to the bride or come watch the big screen of some sport. I can't say rugby today, but some sport that will draw somebody. And then, 
get them to come and then get somebody to lead them to the Lord nicely and methodically in Jesus name. Then you've got personal evangelism in Acts 27 to 40. We just go one on one. We had a fantastic program running in our church when I was growing up. And what we would do is every single Monday night, they would just go and anybody who was a visitor in the church, they'd go into that house and make sure that everybody in that house was saved. I want to tell you right now, the person who taught me most of my foundations as a child was a gentleman by the name of Cecil, Cecil Krobler. And what he would do is once a week, he would go and go to people's homes and you just make sure that they're born again and they pray in tongues. That's all he did. He laid hands. You're born again and are you full of the Holy Spirit? Once a week, you just go to somebody's house. Pray for everybody in the house. And then leave. What is he doing? He's leading people to the Lord. He's an evangelist. And then you get public and mass evangelism. All right. Acts chapter 8 verse 1 to 26. And that's, the, that's now the big scale evangelism that we, that we are used to. And so I want to just encourage us as believers, okay? You need to know that God wants us equipped. God wants us equipped as the body of Christ to go and make a difference. But if you have a heart for the unsaved, you need to cultivate that and say, God, how do I lead somebody to the Lord? Let's give you the tool so we can help you. But it's important that you lead people to the Lord. That's why from time to time I will have a sinner's prayer on a life. You see me why? Because you need to have the opportunity to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, as an ap apostolic ministry, as you can see, we cover many bases. All right? We can cover any one of these five-fold ministries. There'll be times when I'm focused on prophetic. Then I'm focusing on healing. Then I'm focusing on evangelism. Then I'm focusing on growing you up. It's not from the teacher. It's the apostolic call that does that. It moves with all of the areas. It's like the best way I describe it is like a diamond. It's got different facets. All right? So it focuses on different things at different times. But the issue is, at the end of the day, if we're not leading people to the Lord, what are we doing as Christians? And so I want to encourage you to start getting yourself organized. Even if you're a businessman, I use the testimony of a businessman who just loves leading people to the Lord. Man, everybody knew. He had a big trucking concern and he had a serious amount of trucks and everybody knew him. But do you know what he did? Every single person knew that if somebody went into his office, no matter what big shot, what corporate uh, no name, they're coming to make a deal for their stuff, their cargoes. Everyone would walk out of there being saved. Because he made it his mission. You don't leave my office until you're born again in Jesus' name. And I want to tell you right now, he did a phenomenal job. I don't know what he's doing today, but I'm sure he hasn't lost that. But the thing is, we need to start getting serious. And don't sit and separate church from work. You go to the workplace... And you need to lead somebody to the Lord. And especially if you're the CEO and the leader, you need to listen to God and you need to lead them to the Lord when you get a chance. And I'm not talking about um, getting spiritual or super spooky. Please, we're not talking about that. All right, when you need to work, you work. But when you meet somebody, that five minutes, you can lead them to the Lord and change their life. I know lots of businessmen who write down people that they are praying for. Take five people that you're praying for that, are, that you know are not saved and start praying for them every single day and say, God, make yourself real to this person. I pray for this person. I lift them up in the name of Jesus. And you're going to see how God is going to do something in Jesus' name. All right, so I'm going to open up for questions now. We've got 10 minutes left. If you've got a question, please uh, just uh, telegram it to me on the Bible College uh, classes. And I'll answer any questions around evangelism or leading somebody to the Lord that you might have. All right, I thought about this when Jesus ministered to sinners, that there, there were those who thirst, who thirst the word, and there were those who just dismissed and carried on their everyday lives. All right, uh, every day, with everyday's tasks, 
how to evangelize. Do you hope for conviction from the Holy Spirit? I normally share testimony. All right, can we have a teaching on this? All right, what I'm going to do is this, is first have a look at that card. And then what I'll do is I'll take a teaching on that card, that soul winning script that I'm talking about. I promise you it is probably the most powerful thing that I've had as a tool to lead somebody to the Lord, even if you don't know how to do it. All right, so I am going to then do a session. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, if I can get this thing right, I think, uh, where we now? Monday. Friday evening, I'm going to then focus then on a session on how to lead somebody to the Lord. Okay, so let's spread the word around. We're going to focus on leading somebody to the Lord on Sunday. And I'm going to help you to do that and give you the tools. And so that you are able to sit down and pray and get them done in Jesus' name. All right. Anybody else got any questions from me from the students? All right. I'm really excited about what God is going to do in and through the saints. All right. I believe that God is going to do something because we are going to be soul winners. We are going to sit down and I love Reynolds' um, uh, statement. He's got a slogan. You know, we're going to plunder hell and populate heaven. I think it's one of the most awesome things. I love that thing because that means war. We're going to go into hell and just take the people out and get them into heaven. Equip them, give them the word and tell them to go and go and sort out the devil in Jesus' name. And so that's what I'm really excited about. All right, I'm just waiting for one or two more questions and then we can see. Yeah, it's amazing. None of the students have got questions tonight. Just while we're waiting, I want to encourage you. You can join the Bible College anytime. All right? Any, anytime. If you would like to join the Bible uh, Bible School, you can join. All you do is you go look, gibiblecollege.com. Somebody just put it up in the point, uh, thing, please. gibiblecollege.com. And you can join anytime. The program is designed in a way that you start whenever you start and you come back four years and you can get a qualification when you're finished. Okay, so I want to just bless you and encourage you with that. People are asking, when are we going to do the soul winning? It's going to be Friday evening. Okay, so it's going to be Friday evening. I'm going to teach you how to lead somebody to the Lord practically. So let's get the word out. Let's get everybody ready. Let's get your children connected too. All right, I want you to know that we are going to tell you and show you how to lead people to the Lord. And then we are going to, um, we are going to get the scripts out there. Right, so you can take the script and you can lead somebody to the Lord. It is the highest, highest uh, blessing that you can have. Once somebody's been led to the Lord, they need to be shepherded. Does the evangelist then uh, hand the same uh, person over? Yes. Guys, if you're an evangelist, don't hang on to the people. You're going to be so frustrated. Man, I'll tell you what. Evangelists are the most frustrating people to hang around if they're not in their, in their thing. Okay. So, please, once you, um, sorry, okay, the guys are getting this thing, dear car. All right, let's go through this week so that you know. Tonight is Bible College, my, uh, all three sessions. Tuesday night is questions and answers. Wednesday evening is our Zoom session where everybody comes together to pray with each other. Thursday evening is a lecture, Okay. Friday evening is a Bible college lecture, a lecture on, I'm going to take on Friday evening, I'm going to be teaching on evangelism. Saturday evening is questions and answers, and Sunday evening is the church service. Okay. People are asking for the video clip. Okay, I'm not sure what video clip they're asking about. All right. So I want to just say this. I am very excited about people leading somebody to the Lord. And that evangelist must hand that person over and go to the small group and say, yeah, it's up to you to sort out. That small group must take care of him and the evangelist must go find somebody else. It's the same thing that happens with my daughter. All right. Jade is very much like this. She mixes with the most unsaved, ungodly, uncouth characters sometimes. But the issue is she goes there to be a light. And she draws them out. And once they're born again, then they get handed over. She does not walk with them for hours. They'll be friends, but she does not take responsibility for their spiritual walk. That then gets handed over and somebody else does it. Okay. 
One of my sons is very introverted and doesn't speak out to people. He has had Christians try to push him into evangelism, saying if he doesn't speak out, it is because he's shy to confess his love. Okay, that's not true. All right, let me tell you something that is not true. Just because somebody is maybe uh, insecure in talking and, and uh, being able to project or, or say something, I would sit down and say to them, listen, you do where your gifting lies. Okay, God gives boldness to evangelists. Okay, so not everybody is capable of doing that. I mean, it's even like when we sit down and we talk about these live streams. You know how many people are so nervous to sit down and just speak to nobody? You know, because from my side, you look at that and go, Hey, Dr. Arthur's talking to me. I'm talking to nobody. And I'm trusting God that you're getting the message and that you're getting what you need. But you must understand it takes a skill or a development to get through the boldness to understand that I can speak to a camera and, and not have anybody respond to you. I understand the comments, but you understand what I mean? So I'm not actually speaking to a human being. Right now, in this room, there's nobody. Absolutely nobody. I speak to myself. And so you need to have certain giftings for certain things that you do. And so if somebody's an introvert, you'll find that they might be very good at serving. Not everybody has to go out and be this bold evangelist. Please don't do that. Okay, I'm talking about a friend. If you've got somebody who's a friend and you want to lead them to the Lord, how do you do that? Okay, and I want to tell you something. You have no idea what that does. I mean, I went to a school once and it was my kid's school, one of them. And they just asked me to take one session and just pray and just lead the people to the Lord. I, I prayed and the whole class gave their hearts to the Lord. Yeah, about 10 years old or something. And I'll tell you what. I still get messages from that class, that one prayer that I did. And they said, I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm still serving him today. You have no idea the impact that you do when you give our people the opportunity to lead somebody to the Lord because they might come from unsaved parents and they never get the chance. Okay. So I want to just encourage everybody that we are going to do whatever we can to equip you. And I want to encourage the students. Listen, guys, I know that some of you might find some of this work a little bit tough or a bit heavy on your schedule. I want to tell you to endure. You are building faith. You are building a word foundation in your life that will never, ever be taken from you. All right, to today, I still depend on stuff that I learned when I was 12 years old. You hear what I'm saying? The foundational stuff that comes in and gets established in your life will never, ever be taken from you. So let's pray together. Lord, I thank you that we can understand the working and the operating of the evangelist. Lord, I pray right now that you're going to help each one of us to get equipped with the tools to lead people to the Lord. Father, I pray particularly over um, Friday night's session. And Lord, I just pray right now that you are going to just help us to get equip the body of Christ to lead people to the Lord and bring a salvation to them in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in and through your church in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen.